Hello, everyone, and welcome to Coding Story. Come on, everybody, wave. What are you doing? Get excited. All right. Good. Um, we have a, I think, yes, I know, we have a star studded crew here for you today where we're going to talk about coding story. What's your coding story? And we've got some slides that we're going to bring up for you that our colleague Elena, who's sitting in the background, is going to bring up for us momentarily. So there we go. Awesome. Before we jump in, I would love to introduce you to um, the star studded experts and students, student experts that we have with us. So I'd like to start off with, um, you know, before I do an introduction of myself, um, Lala, do the honors. Tell us who you are. Sure. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us. I'm Lala. I'm 16 years old, and I'm based in North Yorkshire in England. Um, I'm extremely passionate for tech for good um, and all things kind of social impact with tech tied into it, I suppose. Um, and most recently, my biggest project has been being a co-chair on the Z Students Committee on the IBM Z Global Student Hub, in which we create content that is entirely for, with and by students. And if you haven't heard of it already, I'd highly recommend you check it out. Cheeky plug, as always. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Lala and I met, um, gosh, this year, it feels like it's been a lifetime ago. Um, and I think it's really important for us to all recognize that no matter where we are in our careers, that anyone can be your mentor and anyone can be your mentee. So Lella and I have um, what I would consider both a mentor and mentee relationship. And what I mean by that is, you know, Lella often mentors me. Yes, I have a 16 year old mentor. And I think we're, you know, often redefining what a, a mentor-mentee relationship is like, where Lella often helps to really get me to think about what a young student um, might want and think and need and what are frust their frustrations and aspirations and pain points so that when we're creating IBM solutions or looking to engage with students, no matter where they are, how are we really thinking about things when it comes to for youth, with youth, and by youth. Is that fair, Lilla? Yeah, 100%. I don't know why I was muted then. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. I think it's like the, the I don't know, the, the term of the year, you know, you're on mute, or can you yeah, hear me, or can you see my screen? I, I wonder how many times if I had a bingo card, if I, you know, how many times I say that. Um, with that, I'd love for um, Natalie to introduce yourself and how you fit into the world. Yeah, absolutely. Happy to be here. My name is Natalie. I am currently located in Chicago in the States. I am with Goodwill. I'm the community manager. So um, I helped um, bring Coding Story to Goodwill and I'm so excited with the results and just the submissions. They're very high quality. So. Happy to be here and happy to celebrate the success of our users. Awesome. Thank you, Natalie. And Niels, with that, tell us a little bit about Goodwall. What is what is Goodwall? What is the purpose? Where can people find it? Yes, of course. So a Goodwall is the place for next generation to become better together. We will run weekly challenges like hashtag coding story to inspire the world to become a little better or yourself. And especially coding story inspires those, you know, who don't code yet with all these amazing stories that we had on Goodwall, those who code. Um, you can find Goodwall on uh, the Play Store, App Store, depends if you're Android or iOS. Um, and please join and yeah, meet some supportive uh, community there for you to help you grow and inspire new things. Awesome. Thank you, Niels. Um, with that, you know, one of, I, I guess, um, you know, I think it, I don't know always how to introduce Pila. I like to introduce her as like my partner in crime, but that sounds like we're out doing bad things, which we're not. She is really my um, my right hand, you know, when it comes to how do we, you know, how do we inspire young people? How do we inspire students to learn about technology, to um, learn to code, to, refine their coding skills and think about careers in enterprise computing. Um, with that, Pila. 
thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Tila Kumbula, and my role is to enable, you know, students that have never been exposed to IBMC, which is the one of the biggest skills that you can have, um, you know, that is demanded throughout the world. Awesome. Thank you, Pila. And I'm going to ask uh, John to say a few words um, by introducing himself and telling him how he fits into the world. And then, John, if you don't mind, we have a 10 person limit on the number of people we can invite. And I and I just found that out. And so I'm wondering if I can trade your place after you say some inspiring words to um, our African brothers and sisters about the work that you do with an IBM, because I'd like to pull in, um, um, ma, ma, I'm gonna say it wrong, Mekateko. Did I say it right, Pila? I also struggle with her name, so she prefers to, to be called Mika. Mika, okay. Yeah. So John, I'd love for you to introduce yourself, say a few words, and then um, if you could pop off after you say a few words, I would love to bring on Mika, who is um, one of our finalists from South Africa. Is that okay, John? Yeah, sure, sure, no worries. Um, thank you very uh, much. Thanks, Melissa, and, and thanks for having me on this uh, panel with this, uh, you know, with this very good colleagues. Um, so my name is John Matogo. What I do is I work in uh, IBM leading the outreach to universities. So for uh, universities that, that are in Africa, I'm the point person that uh, is involved in the collaboration with IBM. Uh, but more than that, what I basically do is uh, promote innovation. Even before joining IBM, I run an innovation center here in Nairobi. And uh, what I have a passion in doing is really enabling people uh, actualize their ideas. So when you talk about innovation, it's, it's really establishing the value of what it is that you're putting out there and making sure that it uh, serves a need that is there in, in the market that you'll have uh, someone uh, you know, taking out their money and uh, paying me for it. Uh, and before that, I was a faculty member in the university uh, teaching coding. So this is how you know, all this fits together. And this is what I'm doing right now in IBM, making sure that uh, I can enable as many young people uh, realize their ideas by giving them all the innovative platforms that we make available to them uh, through IBM. And that's what I do. Awesome. Thank you, John. So thank you for, for coming in and kind of talking to us about some of the work that IBM does within the, the world of academia. Um, lots more to talk about and share. And thank you. I'm going to pop you off and I'm going to ask Mika to, to join. So thank you, uh, John, for stepping in and saying a few words and thank you for allowing us to switch you out to, uh, you are important to us, but I wanna make sure since we only have 10 spaces that we pull one of our winners in. So thank you for that, John. That's quite okay. And, and all the best to whoever's going to be the winner. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, good. So we should have Mika with us um, shortly. And I want to make sure that we're able to um, now hear from our esteemed guests. And you'll have to forgive me for not having your pictures up. Before I get to that, though, I would love to have Angela introduce herself. Don't start off with your keynote yet, Angela, because we're going to go through and do some um, quick introductions. But I wanted to give you an opportunity to just say a little bit about who you are, what you do, and then I'll introduce our finalists and then we'll jump back to your keynote. Perfect. Can you hear me, Melissa? Yeah, it's perfect. Thankfully, That's we've got activity issues today, right, Angela? Yes, technology is not cooperating today, but that's okay. Um, so I am so honored and thrilled to be here with all of you. I have I've been so passionate about the power of technology with its mission. Its ultimate mission is to advance our humanity. And we do that by understanding that each and every one of us matter, that we have a gift that someone else in the world needs. And technology allows us to find each other, to share those gifts, to leverage our collective genius, and to do that at scale with the advancement of technology. So I could not be more excited to hear your stories 
and to show the world, especially my passion is helping the world see the value in youth and not underestimate them, not undervalue them, and to make sure that they have a seat at the table because the world needs their contribution. So I'm so honored to be here, so excited, and I'm crossing my fingers that the technology stays, but it's worth the effort. <laughs> All right, we've got our fingers crossed. Um, we're gonna come back to Angela to talk about what does it mean to matter? And you know what happened? My slide got all messed up here. I don't know what happened. It looked beautiful before. So now I don't have my names on here. So forgive me. Speaking of technology, I'm going to pass it over and I'm going to just, I'm just going to skip over this one. So let's just get rid of that. And I'm going to pass it over first to our friend from Uzbekistan to introduce how you fit into the world. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me, right? Yep. My name is Shainus. I am from Uzbekistan, which nobody knows. It is located. I like know there. Uzbekistan. Come on. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> the first person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like I started learning English like when I was 17 and 18 and had a lot of access to the knowledge. You know, Uzbek, we got like old books, which is not practical anymore. So I learned e English and then I started to learning business and by the luck i've been to united states in 2018 in the summer in the florida and i saw like technology how it grows growing like everything is like digital so why don't learn coding like the 24th century is all about technology and i start coding like i don't have a teacher i just learn from the youtube internet like self-taught and I made like first app, which is like almost ready. I spent uh, like five months, like blood, tears, like sweat, everything is in this app. I'm alone in the board. So yeah, the coding can solve many problems in the world and can bring like a little better place to live. That's why I made like this chance to learn and be like coder, programmer in order to change the world. For example, right here, like my smallest voice, like I never heard, like uh, I didn't think that my ideas, I will go this far. I mean, this milestone is like, means a lot to me, it means world to me because I, in our country, like we don't like, we are developing, we're not like, we're developing, but little bit, uh, how can I say, we have difficulty to go to government and tell our, um, but it is going better, growing, we changing. But yeah, coding story. Awesome, and awesome. Yeah. So I also, I, 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 I also have YouTube channel that I share my own knowledge to both in English and both my local language. Everybody watching, enjoying. Like what I have, like one K views already. Like I, <laughs> awesome. I, yeah, I uploaded like one month ago. Yeah. That's cool. Like I never thought like it's I will go this long. <laughs> well, here you are. All right. I'm gonna switch over to um our friend from India, all the way from India, which I think uh what time is it for you? It's uh getting late for you, so thank you for joining. No problem. It's ten fifteen, yeah. Oh, so it's not too late then. Okay, good. Tell us how you fit into the world. Okay. Hi, hello everyone. I'm so happy to be here. This is Sundra from India, um, to be specific, the south of India, you know, India is a big country. Um, uh, the story of how I landed into coding is just that I also have a story like Shainas. Uh, I think YouTube is such a resource and all those uh, massive online open courses, you know, Coursera, Udemy, they helped us a lot to grow in the coding aspect. And I'm also a very big fan and reader of biology. So to make this world a better place, I just want to revolutionize the way healthcare works and find a way to integrate biology and computer science and to make something really useful out of it. So um, giving a bit of insight into what I do in my personal life or, you know, sort of an extracurricular thing. Um, I run a small magazine. Um, it's basically a team venture. I write um, bio articles. And I do a lot of interviews with people. And, you know, my goal is to you know, inspire even if, if it is even going to inspire just one man, I'm going to be happy with it. 
And yeah, I'm very honored and excited to be here. Excellent. Thank you for joining us. And um, I don't know, Pila, if you have any word. I don't know if you know Mika personally based on your work in um, in South Africa. Um, and since we don't have Mika here today, do you know Mika? I do. Um, she's one of the Z Mia Z ambassador, uh, and she's one of the dedicated one. Um, she's had really successful workshop, master the mainframe workshops uh, in, in her university. And also she's part of the student hub um, where she had uh, this AI series and they had this amazing video they had online that had a lot of people engaged. Um, and they both specialists uh, in AI and people, uh, a lot of students were actually very happy to have an introduction in AI rather than, you know, getting very high level. So they taught that. Um, uh, yeah, I think that's, uh, that's about it from, from my side, what I know about her in terms of Z ambassador, uh, that she's very uh, hardworking and work and does all these things that, um, you know, to engage and uh, uh, um, be a good ambassador for IBM. Excellent. And Lala, um, do you work regularly with Mika? Yeah, she's part of my super cool committee crew, oh, I suppose. Cool. But, um, about Mika. Honestly, yeah. she's, the most, she's the most dedicated, selfless person. Like, I'm trying to get her on this now, but I don't know what's going on. Tech is not working today. But I don't know, she's just an absolute joy to work with. And every time I work with her, she's just like an absolute ray of sunshine, always happy, regardless of what I ask her to do. She's always there to help and just so, so committed. She's just incredible. All right. All right. Excellent. So with that, if I'm not mistaken, Natalie and Niels, do we know the winner yet of Coding Story? We do know the winner. Okay, and I just noticed, I think we might even have Mika with us. Um, so it looks like um, technology might be our friend. Mika, are you able to hear us? Oh, Mika's gone again, denied. This is how technology goes. Um, there we go. All right, so with that, I would love to maybe do like a drum roll. I don't know, just my drum roll. <laughs> Drum roll, please. I am so excited to announce the winner is Mr. Shyness wow. from Uzbekistan. I'm sorry about the pronunciation, but very exciting. All right. Yeah. All right. So what are you going to do with your thousand dollars toward your education expenses? Do you know what you're going to do with it? Our friend from Uzbekistan? Yes, I will spend on the good stuff. I will buy like a new computer and I will buy a server because I have to host my uh, backend in my project. I didn't, you didn't hear my project, right? Tell us, tell us about yeah, your project. This funny one. So I told you like in the nowadays, like English is growing. We have a lot of sources, like uh, you can find everything in the internet, but not in the rural, like other languages. You cannot find, for example, useful information, like how to things in the internet in other languages. So I'm working on the app, which you can find everything in other language. Like, for example, I speak Uzbek. So in our local community, we are trying to do like a podcast, like how to do things, videos and audio books in one app. So people can learn it. Yeah, we just want to do it like in the local market and then go global and try other countries because I heard like in the other countries, they have a little bit uh, difficulties to learn other stuff, skills, for example, digital skills for coding. As we all know, like coding is changing like every day. We have like every new framework in JavaScript, like if you're all like technical, nobody's saying, yeah. Like every framework is coming, every new, new programming language is coming, like everybody, all about like changing. It's, I think like the books a little bit uh, different in programming, like in the other skills too. We need something like interactive and easy to change, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so how do you say congratulations in Uzbek? Mm, tabrik Liman. Oh, that sounds really hard. Okay, Tabrik, how does it go? Tabrik Liman. Oh. 
There you go. He says it better than me. I am super excited for you. I'm also super excited for um, everyone who participated. And I think yeah. that there were so many inspiring um, stories, so many exciting stories. And um, I would love to spend some time with each of you. Um, so as kind of finalists, I, I will make a commitment that um, I will give you um, you know, three opportunities for mentorship with either me and or um, my team to help you kind of think about what resources might be available um, to you. So um, that is an additional thing that we'd like to offer you as um, finalists in our coding story challenge, which we did not tell anybody we were doing that. And that's why I said that all of you are winners. So now mm -hmm. with that, I would love to maybe, Lala, kind of pick your brain a little bit. You know, we talked about like coding story and reputable skills. Before we jump in and have Angela do our keynote, in your mind, why do coding skills matter? That's a really big question. I know, <laughs> and I want some things I can hear too, but I wanted to put you on the spot. Yeah, I think, and something that I always tell people when they say, oh, why are you into computer science? I don't see the opportunities there for me. In the future, regardless of whatever you do, whether you're going to be a doctor, a lawyer, or actually something technical, like the kind of path I'm going down, everyone touches technology. Now everyone's tuning in, they're using a laptop. They might have like a smart device in the background controlling the lights. I don't know how your ecosystems work, but everyone is somehow connected. And, come interact with technology every single day so I think that a coding story and I was saying this when people were entering or people were messaging me to say Della I don't have a coding story what do I do I think that a coding story can literally be writing hello world I know Melissa that's very similar to your story or if you've done your hour of code or if you've just seen the back end of what a computer a website looks like. I think my coding story actually started when I accidentally pressed inspect element on the computer and I suddenly saw that all my favorite educational apps and websites I used to play on were built with this mystery language. And naturally being so curious, I was keen to understand how that worked and why there was this mystery language behind all my innocent little games, I don't know. So I think that a coding story really can be anything and seeing as we're going through this massive digital transformation which has been entirely exacerbated by the current pandemic with everyone going online I think that just having some form of interaction with technology is a coding story and I think from an industry point of view what I'd like to know from some of our industry panelists would simply be how can people then change that one hour of code into something which employers will be looking for in the future? Because I know if you've maybe done your hour of code, you might think, oh, where do I go next? Or if you participate in Master the Mainframe, a competition that's heavily uh, promoted within the IBM Z kind of community, I think that people often think, what's next? I've done that. How do I continue exploring? So for me, I did my hour of code and then I went on to do other courses and participate in hackathons and other things. I think from an industry point of view, it'd be interesting to know what your thoughts are. And when you look at um, potential candidates for a, a job listing, what is it you look for exactly? Um, I can take a stab at that at that first. And then I would love for Pila to share, um, you know, her her thoughts. But you know, I think that it's important, you know, for all of us, regardless of whether we're going to go in and be an engineer or be an architect or be a programmer to understand the basic building blocks of learning to code. Um, you highlighted one of the places to go, and that was, you know, that's code.org, which is through, uh, which is Hour of Code, um, which I personally love their platform as like that first entry point of what is this coding thing? And I get asked that a lot in events, even, you know, people in university of what does it mean to code? I was at my local restaurant last week and um, the owner of the restaurant who is, you know, in his forties and he used to be uh, in the, in the military. He used to be a police officer. He called me over and he's like, I got a question and I want to, you know, ask you privately. So I was like, Oh gosh, what's he going to ask? You know? And he said to me, what is this coding thing? What is it? What is code? Is this like a secret language? And I'm like, well, I guess it kind of is a secret language. I said, you know how, you know, 
when you were, he, he spent a lot of time in Afghanistan. And I said, you know, when you were in Afghanistan, you know, people were speaking Afghani or, or Farsi or whatever, you know, and when you were in this country or that country, you know, you, he spent time in South Korea. I said, they were speaking Korean, right? And it's like, well, yeah, of course. I said, how do you think you communicate with computers and kind of tell them what to do? And he's like, I don't know. And I'm like, it happens through code. It happens through computer science. And he's like, oh, that sounds scary. And I'm like, no, all it is, is just a different language. And I think that, you know, first off, we need to demystify, you know, what computer science is. And I think just having the word computer and science together yeah. just automatically is scary, right? Sure. Um, and I think that if it were taught more like a like an art form, like a language, and it, it would resonate more with a lot of people, I think that's the first thing. And I think the second thing is, you know, assuming that you've had that right entryway, you know, and some people don't need Hour of Code to be the entryway. They're they're naturally curious and creative and you know, like our friend from Uzbekistan, jump into, you know, jump into YouTube or like our friend from India is like, I got this. I'm jumping in. I'm going to teach myself. And that's good. Not everybody learns like that. Um, yeah. But I think once you've gotten that demystification thing, you know, taken care of and you're ready to like dive in and learn, you know, there are a lot of amazing platforms that are out there. Um we have uh, one that is, and we have one of many, there are lots of things obviously available at IBM, but through the IBM Z team where we focus on enterprise computing, um, we have a platform. It is like a, a coding obstacle course, if you will. Um, I'll let Pila talk a little bit more about it, um, but I think this is a, a really interesting place to go to. Um, you can Google master the mainframe and find it there. Um, You'll learn a little bit about kind of, inter you know, we introduce some different coding languages than what you might have access to normally in school. So um, I'm going to definitely, you know, uh, get our two finalists, because I know our one from South Africa is already where. So our friend from Uzbekistan and our friend from India schooled up if they're not familiar yet. So that's one of the things that we'll be talking about. Um, but I think this is a wonderful platform for being able to learn enterprise computing skills. You also have an opportunity to win prizes. Um, so there is more money available. And there also is an opportunity to, when we all travel again, have an expenses paid trip to the um, to the U.S. Um, to attend and, and speak it, you know, with our executives. Um, so I think those are some interesting things. But one of the other things that you asked Lella about, which we'll talk about in a minute, is, you know, what's that other stuff you need? Because it is not just about learning to code or learning digital skills to be prepared for the future of work. Again, we'll talk about some of those skills in a minute where Lella is going to pick our brains on how we uh, how we think about those things, or she's going to challenge me. And I see we have Mika with us. Yay, technology is working. I think Mika is on mute, but hopefully she can get herself off of mute. I have uh, gotten myself off mute. <laughs> Oh, there she is. Mika, we tried to introduce you. We tried to share a lot about what we know about you, and we hope we did it justice, but we'd love to now give you a voice and tell us how Mika fits into the world. We talked about you being a Z ambassador. Um, tell us who Mika is. Okay. Um, firstly, I'd like to apologize uh, for coming really late. My network was horrible, so I just had to do a little take things i guess <laughs> just like so could get it all working um but a little bit about myself and yes that was a that was, that was a brief introduction as to who i am thank you so much i really do appreciate it um okay so my full name is mikate Gongobeni, as you can see um on the profile um i am a third year student um currently studying software engineering in belgium campus south africa and the ambassadorship kind of came to me spontaneously um there was an alumni actually from my school that works at IBM um, and he introduced me to the concept of the ambassadorship and he thought that I would be a perfect fit and I was very excited I was very curious because I'm naturally a curious person um, and so I took it upon myself to learn more about it and I got in <laughs> and it, it's been quite the journey um, just learning more about 
you know, various ways to code because now I also completed my um, level two for Master the Mainframe. And so that just further increased my love for coding because now it's like I can, I can branch off into a variety of languages and learn different algorithms. I could work with different um, servers or mainframes, for example. Um, yeah, I think I kind of blabbed there for a bit. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you so much. And thank you for participating in uh, Coding Story. Before we jump into our um, soft skills chat, I'd love to bring the slide back over to Angela. Because Angela, not only is she um, a friend and also a, you know, a friend of mine personally, a, a colleague, um, I think she's just doing some very interesting work that ties really well into both digital skill building as well as, you know, everything that is special about us. And don't worry, Pila, I'm coming back to you to talk about coding skills. So, Angela, with that, I would love for you to talk to us about what does it mean to matter and what is this matter matter manifesto? Oh, you're on mute, Angela. Sorry. I've been listening so intensely and heartfelt and I've written down like all these notes about your voices and there's this theme in our conversation. I know that we're talking about a coding story about technology, about digital skills, which I'm absolutely passionate about, and I can hear your passion. But underneath it, I also heard that I hesitated because I don't know if I have a coding story, or if I do, I don't know if my coding story is good enough. I think the first young man that spoke, he said, I didn't really think that my ideas could have an impact. And that's the underlying mission of, of not only this movement, but of the message of mattering. Mattering is not an ego thing. It is a DNA level understanding. We need to know we matter. And there's a huge period behind that statement. You matter, period. Every single human being has value, has uniqueness, has gifts. And the most important thing that we need to understand as human beings is that our gifts, if not shared, are don't just do a disservice to us as human beings, they do a disservice to the world because there's someone else in, I always say there's someone else in the room or in the world who needs exactly what you have and you just haven't met yet. And what technology does is it advances what I call um, this um, tactical serendipity. Being, uh, um, what I wanna say, being uh, brave enough to be on technology, to learn code, to um, try anything that advances our story is so beautiful because the web is built upon these serendipitous connections. Like even you and I, Melissa, like what we're able to do to impact today was a simple interaction between a friend of ours, both of whom we've never met in person. But that's the beauty of technology. We don't have to be in the same physical room with each other to make an impact. So every single one of you, whether you have an advanced coding story or an initial coding story, every single one of you has a story and that's what matters most. And the beginning of that story, the first line of the manifesto is you are enough. You don't have to wait until this or if or when or only. You matter, period, period. And the world needs your story right now. Wow, that was super powerful. And it reminds me of it reminds me of this article that I read. And you just tied something together in this article that I read. And I didn't realize it until just now. And that's why I was like writing some things down. <laughs> Not only because it was super insightful, but I posted this you know, some thoughts on um, on Twitter the other day after reading some articles from from psychology, some psychology journal or publication, and it was all on the concept of perfectionism and mattering. And it, and I was kind of thinking about the tie between being a perfectionist and that sense of mattering and then the role that like imposter syndrome plays. So all right. 
often feel like, do I belong? Am I an imposter? Did I get where I am because I deserve it? Or, you know, it, did, you know, do I deserve the seat at the pay table? Wow, that person right. is more senior than me or older than me or more experienced than me or has different skills that I have. Yeah. And like getting out of that perfectionist zone of yes. feeling like everything has to be perfect and recognizing right. that, hey, I matter. And even if I screw up, I still matter. Right. The world doesn't, does not sustain itself. Your life doesn't sustain it. And I'm a recovering perfectionist. So it takes a lot because we want everything to be perfect before we share. But it's actually our imperfections that that cement our relationships. It's the elements of our imperfection that showcase our humanity. Because it is in those times where life wasn't perfect, where context wasn't perfect, where we weren't perfect. Our presentation wasn't was. perfect. Our connectivity Absolutely. wasn't perfect. <laughs> if everything was perfect, we don't need innovation. Innovation doesn't exist in a context of perfect. Innovation exists when the elements of imperfection allow our genius to shine through and and embrace that. Like I I can't even show you my setup right now. I have so many cords going out and I've learned something about like my connectivity, about my core, even something as simple as the technology not working this morning. What mattered is that even if I came in, we were on the phone before and we're like, okay, if I can't come in with my webcam, which is off right now, my eight high de definition one, and you can see my wrinkles and that's fine. Um, we that's can't see them or at least I can. <laughs> if you can't, if I couldn't come in and it was video, I came, I would come audio. If it wasn't audio, I would text in the chat because I'm not worried about showing up perfect. What matters is our presence, our authentic, heartfelt, dignified presence with each other to listen to our stories, to honor our stories, to celebrate. Like I look at this panel, I'm literally getting goosebumps right now. I don't know how to pronounce that in every language, but it means my whole heart is, is on fire because I see these beautiful young people on the side and they showed up today. They showed up today fearless. And um, one of my mentors is Seth Godin. And I um, was in an event with him recently. And he said something that- It was such a superstar. Look at me right now. I'm like, Seth Godin, oh my God. My thinking about the difference, even with not the word even perfectionism, but full confidence. And he said, there's a difference between being confident and being assured. And he said, in the role and the realm of innovation, Confidence is not what we should strive for because you can't be confident that anything is going to work. That means there's no risk. You want an airline pilot to be confident. You want certain professions to be confident. Like I want an airline pilot confident. He can land this plane. But in the realm of what we're doing, changing the world, impacting the world, innovating for better, there is no confidence but there is assuredness. And I want you to enter the world. I want you to enter in code. I want you to enter in any initiative you do with assuredness of these things, that you matter, your experience matters, your insight matters, your passion matters. And the fact that you are giving your whole heart authentically and fully matters. Your innovation might fail, the code might fail, the technology might fail, but you know what? You're going to get right back up because you're assured that the world needs this contribution and it will leave us better off than we found we found it before. And that's what helps us rise above. Be assured that you matter. I love that. Thank you, Angela. <laughs> you are so welcome. I, I wanted to make sure that we, you know, kind of dove into that to just, you know, really think about that concept of mattering. And I'd love to circle back um, now to Pila um, to talk a little bit more about, you know, the skills that you think from a technical perspective, you know, empower students to be able to transform their lives through technology and enable them to gain access to, you know, lucrative jobs. We'll talk in a minute about some soft skills, but talk to us a little bit about the techie stuff that makes you tick. Yeah. 
Oh, wow. Angela was so encouraging. <laughs> you, uh, I, just want to hug you. I just want you to know, I just want to hug all of you. <laughs> I'm so happy that we have this recorded so I can go back and just listen to that every time I feel that I don't, I can't do anything. Um, so my story um, about, you know, even going to the IT route, I, I went to a university going to study accounting. Um, and while uh, I'm so glad you're not an accountant because <laughs> then, I would, then I wouldn't. I mean, there's nothing wrong with going into accountancy. Don't get me wrong, <laughs> but like it would be really hard for you to be an accountant and be my partner in crime when it comes to going to trading camps. You know. Well, I will help you with your money so I can spend it. <laughs> I need that too, baby. I need that too. Yeah. Um. And when I went to university, it was my first time actually having a computer. Well, it was the one that we shared with all the other students. Uh, but I remember us writing an essay because this was one of the requirements. And then we could like we had to have a word count, like count how many words we yeah. had in our essay. And me and my friend were sitting there counting the words. <laughs> <on this. laughs> and then someone came and assisted us, or well, uh, a, a person that helps around the library. And, and tells us, you know what, there's a word count at the bottom. I'm like, oh, okay. And then we felt so dumb, but, um, you know, you we were learning. And and guess what? In my first year, we were, we were doing computer science, accounting, and all these other skills, uh, uh, you know, modules. But I fell in love with a uh, computer. Because mm -hmm. when I finished writing that code and it worked, I just, you know, jumped up and, and screamed. And spending the whole night just writing code, and, and finally it works. And that's where I found my passion. And I think for everyone, their story is obviously different. But I love how, um, you know, our first, um, the, the winner was saying that, you know, it's very hard for, you know, people, for other people to learn coding, especially if it's in a different language from yours, including myself. And and, and it's, it's great that we have, you know, a code org, but you also have master the mainframe. You do not have any, need any skills. Mm -hmm. So you, uh, you know, you don't even need to be uh, interested in IT before uh, by just doing master mainframe level one, and you don't have the skills. You've never coded before. You will be able to complete it because it shows us uh, step by step how to go about it, and also get to feed four kids. You know, we're doing good things out there, and also you know, uh, learning stuff. And in level two. Now you, you're touching on Python, and maybe you've never even experienced or worked on Python before, but you're also learning. And these are, when it comes to IBM Z, these are skills that are, need, are required throughout the world. Because all our, um, you know, most of our banks are actually powered by an IBM Z processing all these transactions. And when it comes to different skills, you, will, um, you can decide that you want to do data science or whatever you want to specialize in, it still works on IBM Z. Can I jump in about the real skills, Melissa? Yeah, go ahead. So I literally detest the word soft skills because it makes them seem it sounds like it's not hard. And they're yeah, really hard. yeah, it sounds like oh, kind of wishy washy. No, these are impact skills. These are my. This is my new frame because words matter. They matter. So impact skills, if you want to impact, and I don't like, I know you're going to think I'm ordinary, but I don't like the word skills because skills also seems like they're masterable, like that I can graduate from adaptability or graduate from imagination. So I call these impact habitudes. They are a combination of habits and attitudes. And I just put those two words together because I can explain them to five-year-olds because here's the beauty. Five-year-olds have all of the things, all of these impact skills, 100% of them that the world needs. And by second grade, by eight years old, 80% of them are gone or dormant because they're not valued. We don't value imagination and curiosity and adaptability and um, passion and all of those things that not only create entrepreneurs, but create stories that make an impact. So let's reframe this and let's start honoring. It isn't about teaching this set of habitudes. A habit is something that is honored and nurtured and practiced from birth. So if we acknowledge our birthright, which is that we matter, that we have genius, Genius is not an anomaly. You don't get like brown eyes and blue eyes and you get to be genius and you get to be an entrepreneur. 
Genius is our birthright. It is the root of our resilience and it is the core of our ability to impact. Average is an anomaly. Average is a choice. So we need to choose to use our genius with these impact habitudes of curiosity and audacity and imagination and adaptability. We have these within us. They need to be reawakened. They need to be encouraged. They need to be supported. But every one of us has the ability to make an impact. So they are not soft and they are not skills because we never graduate. We are in a constant state of evolving these because we're in a constant state of evolving our story to make greater and greater impact. So I'm sorry for being ornery, but I just have to put that in there. <laughs> I love it. And I think it's also helped me kind yeah. of reframe some of the ways yeah. that I've been talking about these. Because I, I, yeah. I always struggled with that word soft yeah. skills. Yeah, I, I struggled with the word professional development skills and yeah. personal skills. And I've been looking for this term and you just solved this pain point that I've had that my brain hasn't been able to come up with the right thing. And you just solved that pain point. Yay! What I want to you know, kind of now kind of maybe adjust ourselves over to is now that we've talked about some of these habitudes, which I had to look down at my notebook, impact habitudes. Um, I, I got it written down. I'm going to have to put a sticky note up here so I remember it but I like it. And some of the things that, you know, we should think about when it comes to that secret sauce or those things beyond just learning to code that will help you not only function as, you know, a good friend and be a good friend, but also, you know, prosper when it comes to the future of work. You mentioned adaptability. So being able to adapt to change, um, innovation and creativity, which has a lot to do with empathy yes. about emotional intelligence and being able to identify someone else's wants, their needs, their frustrations, their pain points. But it's also collaboration and teamwork. How can you work well with others, which again requires a lot of emotional intelligence. Um, these in my mind are, are some of the things among many that I would consider impact habitudes. I had to look down at my notebook again. And speaking of that, speaking of impact habitudes, we have a really exciting event coming up, don't we, Lala? We do. Uh, do you want me to jump in and give them the promo? <laughs> yeah, and I will share my screen as well so that people can see on my screen. And hopefully we can bring it back up on the screen again. Oh, it's doing like a disc. Is it doing yeah. a disco light for yeah. you? <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. I swear I'm not at a disco right now. I might like to be. <laughs> Happening on December the 19th is the IBM Z for Good Ideathon. It's a perfect opportunity for you to develop these habitudes in terms of personal branding, um, what are the other ones that we're talking about? Tech for good and all these different areas in tech. I know earlier we spoke about having code as just another language. And I truly believe that when we go to school and they say modern foreign languages of French, Spanish, German, etc., I think that code and programming should definitely be in there. And looking for a way of finding purpose that we can put behind all our different projects and technical things. Again, the computer science term, I'm kind of just tying back into all the other things here, excuse me. But I think on the topic of, um, where was I even going now? <laughs> That's okay. It's okay. I got yeah. it. We got I your back. I was just saying. But yeah, on the topic of kind of, that's it, putting purpose behind all your projects. You don't want to just code a robot because it's a robot. And yeah. personally, for me, it's looking at how I can bring my kind of humanitarian interest into tech. So looking at some of the previous projects I've been involved in, looking at how tech can help solve COVID-19 and find help find a technical solution to support those problem solving that's going on at the moment. So the IBM Z for Good Ideathon is just another opportunity for you to do just that. Um, there's going to be three kind of idea categories, which you're going to come with ideas in mind, ready to learn and develop those further. Um, Melissa, can you just remind us of what? Yeah, I can share those, um, those themes. So we have three themes and 
keep in mind that we've got a star studded group of um, collaborators. So you've met Angela from Choose to Matter. Um, she is one of our esteemed collaborators, code.org, which we gave a shout out to code.org previously, UNESCO. So yeah, UNESCO, so the UN, um, the uh, Student Senate for California Community Colleges, CF for All, Junior Achievement, Goodwall, our friends here at Goodwall, uh, Arab Women in Computing, ISIC, Angel Hack, lots of great collaborators. This is only a few. And the themes are focused on gender inclusion when it comes to building tech skills. So Mika, come with your ideas ready. Mm -hmm. And you boys are allies. We expect you all in this as well. Mm -hmm. So gender inclusion is the first one. The second one is um, racial inequality as it applies to digital skill building. Now we know that building digital skills is not the only factor that would go into um, racial equality, but we think that it's one aspect of it and one important aspect. The third is access to digital skills education. So you can see a theme of this event that is all about learning new skills on the technical front, as well as many of these uh, impact habitudes. How do we empower you and inspire you to share your skills forward? And you will have an opportunity to win another thousand dollars. And I'm going to freak out if it goes to our same friend in, in Uzbekistan. And I think he's going to completely freak out if he gets it too. But we are always all about sharing the love. So a thousand dollars, one year of mentorship from IBM. Yep, one year of mentorship to help hone in on your idea, to help bring it to life, an opportunity to present on a virtual global stage. And it says at an IBM event, let me just tell you, it is going to be IBM events, events. Mm -hmm. So it's not just one. And for our coding story participants, don't worry. We have other events that we would like you to speak at. So expect more invites. This is the first of what I hope to be many to help you also think about how can you hone in on your profession, your um, public speaking um, skills. We will give everyone who submits an idea access to skills build, which is one of those areas to help you think about your impact habitudes. Um, and we will also be submitting, um, or the ideas that get submitted, we will be creating a globally recognized idea book that will be published in collaboration with UNESCO and our other collaborators. What did I miss, Lala? Did I miss anything? Did I catch it all? I think the same thing that we missed last time is that this is entirely for with and by students. I oh, kind yeah. of helped project manage this whole event. So it's entirely for you, with you and by you. So yeah, I think that if you're a student looking to learn more about the different fields and technology, how you can develop your kind of personal brand and different things like that, we've really tailored this as much as we can to the end user being students. Um, we didn't just want industry, and I think this can be the case a lot of the time, where they just throw a lot of stuff at you that might, they might think will work for you, but it might not really. So having students entirely involved in this and they'll be leading all of the different skills building sessions we're really wanting it to be something that's super highly valuable and you'll be able to take away so many key takeaways that you probably have never really heard of before but having students lead will just mean that it will be yeah i think a lot more inclusive and a lot more useful so it's a saturday afternoon for me well spent yeah, and so th you've got um, the the place to register up on the up on the screen here. It's ibm.biz slash we dash ideathon. Um, we've got lots of space, so I hope I hope our our three uh, finalists. I hope that you have all registered because we've got homework for you. <laughs> Number one, I hope that you've registered. And you don't have to register now because I know we're all busy talking here. But I'd like to um, challenge you in India in South Africa, in Uzbekistan, to help me break our platform by bringing so many people, so many students to the platform for this um, event that we really inspire everyone in each of your countries, as well as everyone watching to um, encourage young people to, um, to take part, to learn new skills. And you know, you're not gonna hear from Angela, you're not gonna hear from Pila, Oh, wait, no, you're going to hear from Pila. Yeah. 
You're going to hear from Pila. Yep, I forgot about that. Um, you're not going to hear as much from me. I'm going to be on a panel, I think, with Lala or someone. I can't remember. But Lala or the students. So Alex, for example, instead of our vice president mm -hmm. of our department coming in and doing a talk, mm -hmm. she's not leading it. Alex is. You are. Yep. It's all for, with, and by students. I do enough talking. <laughs> Give your voice a rest for once. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So we've got two minutes left. Mika, what are your, any inspiring words that you have to share with um, yeah, the audience? Mika around? will be there as well. She's a speaker. Oh, good. Mika will be a speaker. But any inspiring words that you'd like to share with um, any, you know, people watching today or who will watch the recording later? Okay, well, um, okay, can you guys hear me? Uh, just yes. Just my connection. Fantastic. We can hear um, you. If there's anything that I would need to study um, uh, for this, um, I think I'd like to just highlight back to the video that I posted for my coding story and the message that I left at the end. And it is that it's okay to fail once, it's okay to fail twice, and it could be okay to fail a couple of times. And as a matter of fact, it is expected. Yeah. But that yes. doesn't mean that mm -hmm. you won't be able to progress at the end of the day. It is a work in progress and you mm -hmm. will get better before you know it. Yeah. And there's no failure if you learned, right? right. So our friends from India, we've got one minute left. Tell us what any inspiring words that you have for your fellow up and coming developers. So yeah, I don't really have much to say because um, everything has been covered. <laughs> You know, you guys have done some intense talk on that. So I'm just going to say that um, anything, including developing, it's not only coding, it might be anything. The first step might be really intimidating. I think once we make the second step and go to the third step, fourth step, and then the thing becomes easier. So I think the one thing that we have to make sure is that we don't get off track and, you know, stay consistent and stay focused on something. And awesome. Yeah, so whatever it is that you food. set your heart to do the thing, do the thing. All right. My friend from Uzbekistan, and I'm going to remember everybody's names next time, but they're so small on my screen right now. And I'm so afraid to mess them up. So my friend from Uzbekistan, um, tell us any final one sentence that you want to share to inspire people. So to developers, I don't say like, don't, deeply concentrate on the technology itself yeah. as angela said like don't be perfectionals yeah. just learn basics and try to build something awesome. and make a so change in the world do the thing don't be afraid to fail just do it with that thank you for joining tech tv this is um your coding story hmm. thank you bye Thanks. everybody bye. 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 See you on Sunday. <laughs> yeah, see you on Sunday for the IBM Key for Good Ideathon. Beautiful, you guys. Thank you. Thank you.